the DuPont Company brings you Parade, starring Gene Hersholtz on the Cavalcade of America. But first, here is Game Whitman. Here is the word about the prices of DuPont Zerone and Xerex antifreezes. With the lifting of OPA regulations, the DuPont Company has not increased its prices for these products. They remain the same to all retailers as they were before the war and under OPA. Tonight, we present Gene Hersholt in Parade on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. You've probably never heard of Peter Barrick. Historically speaking, he's not a famous man, simply one of millions who have come here to America from many lands, all with dreams in their hearts, grandiose dreams and humble ones. And when they are translated into reality, we find that each has added to the sum of American progress and achievement. Tonight, we tell you the story of such a man. True, you have never heard his name before, nor will you hear it again but you will recognize him or his counterpart in a friend or a relative or possibly in yourself. It's a brisk autumn day, and down the main street of a representative of American town, a military parade takes its brave and splendid way. Among the crowds lining the route stand Peter Berrick and his family. Fine parade, Mother, huh? Wonderful parade. You like parades, don't you? I wouldn't miss one for the world. I remember the first parade I saw in America. What? What did you say, dear? Oh, I was just remembering the day I came to America. It was really a parade Clement and I saw then. We thought it was, though. Yes, how well I remember Clement Hooker and me getting off the boat from Ellie's Island. We certainly were a couple of greenhorns. Last, Clement, we are on American soil. Oh, it feels good, yes. <laughs> Anything feels good. Anything but that boat. <laughs> <laughs> You're still seasick, yes? Yes. Oh, come, we will take a little walk. A walk? But where to, Peter? <laughs> what does it matter? This is America, Clement. Come. Look, Clement. The buildings. Yeah. So big, Peter. Yes, I had no idea everything was so big here. Maybe we should better go back, yes? No, we are going to stay. But we have no money, no jobs, no place to sleep. Tomorrow we will start looking. We will find something. Look, a parade. Parade? But they are not marching. They're standing still in the street. This is very odd, Peter. Yes. Are they soldiers? Uh, how should I know I came when you did? Uh, if it is soldiers, we should go the other way. <laughs> I do not like it. But look, there are women in the same uniforms. I do not understand this. I will ask one of them. Oh, no, 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 please, Peter. It is not good to ask soldiers. You know that in the old country, they did not like us to speak to them. Oh, this is not the old country. I'm going to ask her. That one. Peter, please, Peter, we will go to jail. You will please excuse me? Yes. What is this parade? Parade? Oh, oh it's not a parade. We're the Salvation Army. Army? Uh, Peter, I told you. Please, lady, my friend, he did not... No, no, you don't understand. We're holding services here in the street. Services? Yes, church services. You mean this is like church? Yes. Clement, you see, in the old country it was soldiers, soldiers, soldiers. We are worshiping God. That's right. Would you like to join us? I... Uh, Peter, you know we have to find a job, a place to sleep, no place. No, we have no time now. Some other... Yes, I know. We... Thank you, and You we... have no money, no job, no place to stay. Uh, we, uh, my friend and I, we just uh, come from the boat, uh, Ellis Island. Oh, I see. Well, why don't you come with us? We'll give you something to eat, put you up for the night, and, and in the morning see about getting jobs for you. That is, if you want to work. Yes, yes, we want to work. <gasps> All right. We'll have prayers in a moment, and, and then we'll go to the mission. But we have no money, none at all. You don't need any. Now we'll have our prayers. Just wait. Hello, Mr. God. This is Peter Berrick. 
My friend Clement Hupka and me, we have reached America safely. We thank you for letting there be a place like America to come to. We are strange here. We have no money. But already we have found these friends. We have dreams. And they say that in America you do not have to be rich to make your dream be true. My dream, Mr. God, is that I should have a house, a small white house of my own. In the old country, it is not possible for such a one as me to have his own house. But I dream it always. And here in America, I'm ready to work hard, very hard, to be a good American and to get my dream. Please, if it is not too much trouble, please show me how. Is the streetcar so late in coming? Peter, what difference does it make if we get home a few minutes later? Now that we have finished our day's work, why be in such a hurry? Because Michael Stastny, who lives next door, promised to take me to see another moving picture. Ah, uh, you and your moving pictures. Oh, this one is about a cowboy. <laughs> look, look across the street. There must be something wrong. Oh, come on, we see what it is. Votes for women, she says. <laughs> Why shouldn't women have votes? Clement, it is a woman. She's standing on a chair making a speech. Peter, here comes our streetcar now. Uh, wait, wait. I want to hear what she's saying. Uh, woman's place is in her home. Why don't you go on? If you think we're smart enough to raise your children and teach them in school, if you think we're smart enough to write books and read them, why aren't we smart enough to vote? Oh. Come along, little lady. I'm going to put you back in the kitchen where you belong. Let go of my arm. Clement, that drunken man is annoying her. Let us stop him. No, no, it is not our affair. Stop it. Let me go. Now, you come along with me, my pretty little man. You will please let that young lady alone. Huh? Who says so? You let her go. Get out of my way, you drunken... Oh! oh. oh. That will show you not to annoy a lady. Since when's a suffrage yet a lady? Yeah. yeah for it. Interfering foreigner? Yeah, go back. Don't pay any attention to them. It was wonderful of you to help me. Please do not thank me. It was for me a privilege. Thank you. I I should like to take you to your home to see that you get there safely. Why, that's very kind of you. Where is she? Here, yeah, defenseless man, will he? Let me out. Oh, look out. Oh, get away from me, oh, you drunken. Stop, stop, stop. 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 Are you hurt? My, my nose is bleeding. Oh, dear. Oh, it certainly is. Here. Here's my handkerchief. And I think I'd better take you home. Awfully well. Thank you. In the old country, they say I'm best in the whole village. Well, you're certainly the best in this whole park. Shall we sit down on this bench and rest a while? That would be nice. <sighs> <sighs> Alice, you enjoy being with me like this on Sunday afternoon? Of course. But I certainly wouldn't have done it so often. Oh, goodness, my hands are frozen. Oh, here, let me. Are they better now? Uh-huh. The minute you touched them. Alice, I... I wish to ask you a question. Yes, Peter? All the time we know each other. Six months now. You're making speeches for... suffer... suffer... for women to vote. Yes. Alice, is this enough for a woman to do with her life? Just <laughs> to vote? Oh, Peter, of course not. Voting would only take a small portion of my time. Then uh, you would have time for marrying and a home and children? Yes. I'm sure I would, Peter. Uh, a woman should have those things. What about a man? Oh, he too, but 
A man cannot get married when he is only a worker in a factory. You mean all those men who work at your factory aren't married? Oh, no, many are. But uh, to ask for the hand of a young woman like, like you, man should make a good salary. He should be able to give you, uh, I mean her, a real home, a house in the country, a white house with a garden, not just two rooms and a flower pot. That would be very nice, of course. But when two people are in love, they don't need a house and a garden. Wherever they are, it's a palace. Harry, that is very beautiful. Now, you are very beautiful. Harry, I... I, I yes, I, Peter? I, I, are your hands still cold? No. I mean, yes. Oh, Peter, why don't you say it? Say what? Say that you love me. Of course I love you. <gasps> oh, I said it. I thought I would not have the courage to say it. And I said it. Do you have enough courage left over to ask me to marry you? Alice. Alice. You are my courage. You are my heart and my blood. Alice. Will you marry me? Peter, will you hand me that spool of thread? What? Oh, the thread. Yes. Thank you. What are you sewing, my busy little wife? Curtains for the new apartment. Ah, uh, the new apartment. And it should have been our own house. Now, Peter, it's a perfectly beautiful three-room apartment, and we're lucky to get it. Lucky. What are you reading there? The history of America <laughs> for the citizenship examination. Oh, Peter, you've got several years to go before you can take it. Oh, it's never too soon to read the history of America. And if I forget, I read it over again. But I don't think I will forget. Alice. When our son is born... He may be a girl. No, no, no. In our family, the first is always a boy. <laughs> when our son is born, he will be American citizen the first minute he draws breath, yes? That's right, dear. That is something wonderful. My son will be citizen before me. Oh, I must hurry and catch up with him. Uh, where's my place? Look all right. Oh, you look fine, dear. Now, don't be nervous. Papa, what are you going to do? Victor, soon I will be an American citizen like you and the baby and your mother. What do you think of that, huh? Why is Mama crying? Crying? How is your crying at such a moment? It's just because I know how long you've waited for this. And how much it means to you. And because I feel a little ashamed at the way I've taken it for granted all my life. Without even stopping to think what a precious thing it is to be an American citizen. Peter Varick. Alice, he's calling me. Yes, right here, Mr. Judge, Your Honor. I am Peter Varick. Mr. Varick, you have fulfilled all the requirements for naturalization. Are you prepared to take the oath of citizenship? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Then raise your right hand and repeat after uh, me. Uh, please, Your Honor. It is not necessary to say it for me. I studied it for six years. I know it in my heart. I, Peter Berwick, hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of which I have heretofore been a subject, that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. You 
are listening to Gene Herschel as Peter Varick in Parade on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As he watches a parade march by, Peter Varick, surrounded by his family, thinks back over the 30 years since he first came to America, a penniless immigrant. There have been wonderful times and sad times for him. The years of the First World War, the years when things were hard. And he thinks of the dream he cherished of getting a little white house for himself and his family. And now he thinks of something else, the realization of another dream, one that seemed almost too wonderful to have come true. There he is, Peter. I see him. Oh, he looks so serious. It is a serious moment. When a boy graduates from college... They all look so nice in their caps and gowns, marching along the path. Don't say Uncle Clem. <laughs> Victor's a fine boy, uh, a son to be proud oh, of. Oh, he did it all by himself, Clem. Worked his way right through the four years. And even after I was promoted to foreman, he wouldn't let me help him. He said to put it in the piggy bank for the little White House. <laughs> Still dreaming about that little White House, Peter, even after all this time. What has time got to do with it? The dream doesn't get old. Peter, they're breaking up. Come on, we must find Victor. Oh, there he is now. Victor, here we are. Victor. Hi, I'll be right there. My son, a college graduate. A wonderful country. Oh, hello, folks. Well, did you enjoy the ceremonies? Congratulations, oh, darling. thanks, Mom. Congratulations. My boy. Thank you, Uncle Clem. I am so proud of you. It's a good thing that my suit is a little loose to me. <laughs> <laughs> now we go back to the apartment and have a little party. Oh, there are Dorothy and Junior. I told them to meet us here. What are you going to do now, Victor? Have you made up your mind? Well, yes, I have. What? Victor, you didn't tell us anything. Well, I wasn't going to tell you even now, but... Well, I don't have much time, so I suppose now is as good a time as any. Victor, what are you talking about? I've enlisted in the Air Corps. The Air Corps? You are going to be a soldier? Oh, Victor, why? Our country isn't in the war. Sooner or later we will be, Mom. All of us. He is right, Alice. This is not a war against certain countries. It is a war against all decent people. Victor. If I was proud of you before, there is no word for how I feel now. Hey, who's there? Peter, is that you? Alice, what are you doing in the street during an airway drill? I've been looking for you for half an hour. Here, put on your scarf. You break the rules to bring me a scarf? It's cold out now. You put it on. All right. At least if it was something important, like a, like a letter from Victor. I only wish it were. I, I wonder if he's still in England. Oh, Alice, you didn't leave the lights on in the apartment? No, dear. Dorothy came home just as I left, and I reminded her not to turn the lights on until after the all-clear signal. Got your family well-trained, Mr. Air Aid Warden. Yes, very well-trained. You went out in the pitch dark just to... Come on, I'll take you home. I hope none of the other wardens will see us. Can't I stay with you till the drill is over, dear? Maybe I can help you in your work. Well, if you want to help me in my work, you stay home and see that the apartment is dark and, uh, and sew another fastener on my armband. In the dark? Uh, we should have an inside room. When we have our own little house, we will have an inside room. Darling, I heard about a very nice house that's for sale in Maybank. You want to go out and look at it? Is it wide? Yes, darling. We go see it next week. Uh, here we are. Now you go straight upstairs. Hey, you on the second floor. Turn off that light. Oh, dear. Turn it off before I... Alice, it's our apartment. I know, dear. Dorothy must have forgotten. Forgotten? That is no excuse. That my own family should do a thing like this to me. Everyone will see it. Well, why doesn't she open the door? Dorothy, it's me, Papa. Open the... Dorothy, the parlor lights is on. Oh, Dad, Mother, I... What's the matter? What is it? This telegram from the War Department. The War Department? It's about Victor. Oh, Daddy, he's missing. Victor's missing in action. 
See? A rose bush would be nice in that corner. Yes, and those tall flowers. How do you call them? Hockey hollies? <laughs> Hollyhocks. Oh, Hollyhocks. Right along the back fence. The house itself is just the right size for us. Four bedrooms are just what we need. That is. If Victor ever comes back? Yes. He will come back, Mother. We must not think otherwise. Not even for a minute. He will come back. I tell you this, and you must tell it to yourself. Victor will come back. Oh, Peter. I tried. But it's been so long, and no word. No word at all. Oh, we must have faith, my darling. I tell you what we do. We decide which of the bedrooms is to be for Victor. And then we fix it up like we are expecting him to arrive there the next day. We uh, put all his things in it. His books and his pictures and, and his clothes in the closet. Yes, that, that's how we'll do, Mother. But do you mean we're buying this house? Of course. It's the house I dreamed about when I came to America. It's the house I promised to give you so many times. Of course we'll buy it. Peter, how much does it cost? Uh, that I forgot to ask. Oh, darling. It may be much more than we can afford. I know. We ask the agent. Yes, my dear. I enjoyed every minute. The glad times and the sad times, too. Peter, dear, I'm talking about the parade. What are you talking about? The parade? Why, it's over. You've been very quiet the last ten minutes, dear. I was thinking about you, Mother, and about Dorothy and Junior and Victor. I thought so. Hey, did I hear someone mention my name? Oh, you mind your own business, Victor, and button your coat. Oh, now, Dad, stop treating me like an invalid. I'm okay now. <laughs> Anyway, it's time now we go home and eat the good Thanksgiving turkey your mother fixed for us. Well, that's all right with me. Let's go. Think of it, Mother. Our first Thanksgiving dinner in our own home. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, look wonderful. at that turkey. I hope it's done. Please, right. please, oh, you can't miss now, it. please, we oh. say grace first. Okay. Hello, Mr. God. This is Peter Berwick and my family, together again for the first time in many long years. And please look where we are, Mr. God, in a little white house of our own. Today is Thanksgiving Day. But even if it was just a plain, everyday Thursday, I would say, thank you, Mr. God. Thank you for our help and for each other. And thank you for America, where a man like me from a strange land and without any money could have a dream and get a chance to make it true. Please help us to deserve our many blessings. I would like to say much more. But my heart is so full, it makes my throat all tight. Also, from the look on Mother's face, I think the turkey is getting cold. So I will finish. Amen.
This is Gain Whitman. Many a prayer, like Peter Verrick's, will be offered this Thanksgiving season, and many an American will pause thoughtfully to count his blessings and reflect upon the meaning of Thanksgiving Day. We know how it began. The rocky shore on which the pilgrims landed after their stormy voyage represented a land of promise to them, not a land of ease and idleness. Before they could so much as build shelter, they had to cut down trees. It was the same with everything else. They were cold. They were hungry. Many of them died. But at last, the harvest was in. The first all-important harvest and the pilgrim leaders proclaimed the day of thanksgiving. The men, the women, the children met with their Indian friends. They thanked God for the harvest, and because man does not live by bread alone, they thanked him for freedom to speak their minds, freedom to worship as they pleased. This year, the first after a war in which democracy was desperately challenged, we have much for which to be thankful. Thankful above all else that our democracy has been preserved. Thankful, too, for our abundant harvest. There has been a steady progression in the material side of American life until the average man today has a standard of living higher than many a rich man's half a century ago. The heart of America is our precious freedom. Freedom to work when and where we please. Freedom to say whatever we please, to whomever we please. Freedom to vote. Freedom to worship, as our conscience directs us. That God has given us the strength and the ability to hold that freedom through the years is our most compelling reason for giving thanks. And so, a happy Thanksgiving Day to you from the men and women who make the DuPont companies better things for better living through chemistry. Here is our star, Gene Herschel, and I think he'd like to say a word about tonight's story. Thanks, Gene. Tonight's show makes me think of, of many of us who, like Peter Barrick, have come to America with dreams in our heart. Here in America, we have found freedom of expression in our newspapers and our theaters and on the air. I think Peter Barrick expresses it best when he says, Thank you for America, where a man like me from a strange land could have a dream and get a chance to make it true. Many a prayer like Peter Varick's will be offered this Thanksgiving season. Many an American will pose thoughtfully to count his blessings and reflect upon the meaning of Thanksgiving Day. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Gene Herschel is the star of his own program, sponsored by the Cheeseboro Manufacturing Company. Our Cavalcade play was written by Priscilla Kent. Featured in the cast with Gene Herschel tonight were Virginia Gregg as Alice and Jerry Mann as Clement. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Anne Harding in Mother of Freedom on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.